So we're a digital audio content company which kind of covers multiple different styles of music recordings. Some recordings that we have are um, from 1910 which is kind of an old blues recording and we do record and make tracks right up to the current day in-house so we have recording studios and recording facilities within the business and we use obviously studios around the country as well to record and then licensed content effectively what we are is just a hub for all that content and then um, we work with multiple distribution partners I originally was involved in music production around 1990 was the first time I ever did that. So that's like 30 years ago. So <laughs> that was just like amongst friends and we just we made a band and wrote some music and da 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 as you would do at that age. The inspiration comes from my initial experiences and then the, obviously the, 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 the radical changes within the distribution of music which made me kind of realise that it was kind of, a, it was a completely different world that we were entering kind of in the mid 90s. Probably the internet, because the first website that we did in probably around 2004 was the first serious website. And as soon as the website started to take orders, which we did sell physically on CDs, that made the shop kind of a little bit redundant, because obviously people were able to order it from all over the world. Well, in the UK to start with, and then we took orders from all over the place, South Africa, Australia. And we did um, licenses in various different countries. And because that was taking up a lot of my time, it got to a point where we closed the door of the shop, we actually locked it. We work with the dance brand Cream in Liverpool, and I produced a show that they do more or less every year at the Liverpool Cathedral, and that's called Cream Classical. And that's really a proud moment, because obviously I get to see people's reaction. I guess probably the big one was when Spotify started. We got in an invitation to use that service, which was only like an invite-only system at that time. There wasn't a lot of music on there, and it wasn't really a public access service at that point. I was actually in the White House. It was around the first year that I came over to Wildspool Park, and I remember getting onto the system and thinking, wow, this is too good to be true, really, because all the music was available. You could just press play and there didn't seem to be any transactions. Obviously, as I've got to understand that, I understood that there was a monthly subscription fee that you would pay, and then, then it became obvious that that was kind of the future of the music business, I suppose. <laughs> Not really had much of an impact because we've always focused on recorded music, and I've just kind of grown and moved my business around the economy of that. And obviously, we're working in serviced offices, and having quite a f flexible workforce, I've been able to adapt to, to any of the external changes that have happened. I've never bought an office, I've always leased. I've been able to kind of shrink the business and grow the business at will really, dependent on what was happening in the music business as a whole. Kind of flexibility has been dead important for the survival of the business, if I'm honest. I guess that flexibility is probably one of the words. We collaborate across the office. They have different departments, but because the music that we make and the produce that we get involved in are kind of fairly unusual sometimes, it's quite important that people are able to shift their sort of skill set into different aspects of the business. So it's very open, I mean, literally open, so we don't have like many little offices anywhere. It's probably to do with the location of Willspool Park because that's kind of really easy to get to from for all the staff and myself. Warrington's a kind of cool place to work from without being too dismissive of Liverpool and Manchester but there's a lot going on in those cities and it's quite distracting and that's one of the reasons I don't work in a city and I don't I've never considered moving to London. So I kind of like the fact that we're in a, a little bit out of the loop in, in terms of the main industry. Yeah so Willsville Park's kind of good for that. Not done much really because the main fabric of this building is obviously from the old brew house and a lot of the um, original parts of that structure are still there which I kind of like as well. I think Brum would have done a really good job of it. Mm -hmm.